Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to load a gel for gel electrophoresis. Now, you can load it with your products of PCR or you can load it with a set of DNA that you've cut up with restriction endonucleases and you want to see the pattern of bands. Now, I've worked in three or four labs during my time as a lab scientist and loading a gel for electrophoresis was something we did on a daily basis basis it is a skill it is tricky but with practice you get really 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 quick at it and I used to load gels very quickly very frequently and uh, we used to have little races doing it anyway for this one I got to go to the STEM outreach center at the University of Kingston where you can go and visit as a school if you want to do that then the description has all the details Running a sample on a gel electrophoresis can be used to separate the products of PCR. This can be used in genetic fingerprinting, in diagnosis of pathogens or diseases. And in this video, we're going to be looking at how you actually do that. Loading a gel takes a lot of care and attention. It involves very small volumes on pipettes. This pipette will do between 2 and 20 microliters. You need to set the amount you want. This is generally between 5 and 10 microliters of your sample. Holding it securely, this pipette will hold between 100 and 1,000 microliters. Here it is set at 300 microliters. Picking up a tip, you want to be careful when you do this so it's not too vigorous and this is our loading buffer. This is a bright orange dye which will help us see what we're doing. So I've just taken a little bit up into the pipette and then I'm just going to pipette small amounts nice and orderly so we don't get confused. You can do this on a parafilm or into a pipette if you want. You can then push through to the second stop to get all of the liquid out of the pipette tip. We can discard that tip now. We are not going to reuse things. That will lead to cross-contamination of our samples. After your sample is mixed with the dye, you can then very carefully and slowly pipette it into the well. It should sink to the bottom and there shouldn't be too much spilling out from other places. You can then change tips and pick up another sample to load. You can mix it with the, you can mix it with the sample in a number of different ways. I'm choosing here to mix it on the lid. Here is our sample going in. In the first well, a ladder is added so we can see the size of things. More sample is taken up into the tip, mixed with the loading buffer so we can see it when it is loading into a gel and then very carefully and slowly pipetted into the well so that we don't lose any. This is a skill. It takes a large amount of practice to do this. I spent years in the lab petting and loading gels. It is very tricky to get the pet still and to get a small volume into such a small place. This gel can now have the lid put on it and it can be turned on the power moving the DNA sample through the gel. The gel can then be visualized under UV radioactive hybridization or with a fluorescent probe to see where the bands are. This can then have a photo taken and be used for diagnosis. Ow! 
Ouch. This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.